You might think that Google can find anything. It seems like the internet is open, and all information is free. But this is not the case. In reality, we only are able to freely access that which is indexed by search engines. And how much do search engines find? Less than a slither of the whole sum of the internet. Searching the internet today is like dragging a net across the surface of the sea. There are deeper things beneath. We only observe the tip of a giant iceberg. Search engines discover websites by a process known as web crawling. A web crawler is a program which scans websites for hyperlinks and follows them to their natural conclusion, a bit like Alice going down the rabbit hole. The web crawler maps the structure of a website, records and describes all the links, and then search engines format those results for you to see when you conduct a search. Websites which do not have an index or a system of visible links cannot be scanned or detected by a web crawler and thus are unindexed. We refer to this unindexed part of the internet as the deep web. In years past, it was also referred to as the invisible web. In essence, we are referring to internet resources such as websites which are not found by search engines. While the vast majority of deep web is publicly accessible, it will not appear on Google, Bing, or Yahoo. So what's in the deep web? First, subscription databases like EBSCOhost and JSTOR, more than half of the deep web is here. Second, dynamic content, which is generated after using search boxes and forms on websites. The results of a search on Facebook is an example. Third, unlinked content, stuff which does not have any publicly indexed websites pointing to it. Think of that resume link on your personal website or blog. Anyone can download it, but only if you give them the link. Fourth, private web, websites which you need to log into and are secured. Think of your Gmail account and all the files with it. Fifth, real-time content. Live streams and feeds, by their very nature, cannot be indexed. Sixth, contextual web. Some web resources are restricted by IP address. Much of what we consider to be everyday resources would be invisible to the Internet users of China, who must deal with the Great Firewall. Seventh, limited access content. Websites which restrict indexing or web crawling by search engines or otherwise limit what they can index. For every Flickr, there are an innumerable number of private websites which only become visible when someone gives you a link to them. Eighth, non-HTML content. Textual content encoded in multimedia such as image or video or specific file formats not handled by search engines will not be indexed. So, what is the relevance of these facts? Why does this all matter? Quite simply, when you are performing research on the internet using search engines, you are only seeing a small slither of what is there. Some of the best information is neither free, nor is it on search engines. Here is where library resources can really come in handy, because you can access a great deal of the deep web through them. As I might remind you, over half of the deep web consists of subscription databases such as EBSCOhost, ProQuest, and JSTOR. Through an academic library, you can often access these resources and greatly enrich your research. Ultimately, the distinction between surface web and deep web is blurring, as search services now are able to crawl once restricted content. That being said, the deep web is still a reality today and constitutes the vast majority of the internet, so the savvy student would be smart to consider it. Remember, Information is not free, and you can use your library to delve deeper than search engines allow. To learn more about the deep web, consider these following sources.